Hello and welcome to another Artful Bodger video. In today's video, I am planning to fit a Tong Sheng TSD Z2 mid drive e bike motor to this donor bike. Now, if you haven't seen my unboxing video, there should be a link somewhere over here. Uh, I talk about what you get with the kit. I also talk about why I picked this particular bike to be the donor bike. Um, I've got the instructions in front of me, and um, as I mentioned in the previous video, um, there's some nice pictures and diagrams in here, but they do miss out quite a lot. For example, the first step assumes you've already removed your existing pedals. There's nothing about fitting brake levers or indeed the throttle. So um, there are a few other things I'm gonna have to sort of gnaw out myself. Uh, it should be an interesting challenge. So I think we're gonna get cracking. And the first thing I'm gonna do is actually remove my pedals. So I'm assuming I'm gonna to have to remove the pedals as the new kit comes with new pedal arms. Uh, to do that, there's a special tool, which looks like this. Uh, I'll put a link in the description. Um, it makes it a lot, a lot easier. So basically, you just do this. This one's come off particularly easily. I can do it now by hand. Now what I would say is that on the other side, it's the wrong way round. So your thread is gonna be back to front, which is confusing. So we do it back to front. It actually has come off very, very easily, which is encouraging. Now to remove the um, pedal arms here, or the pedal cranks, you need another tool, and it's this. Again, I'll put this in the description. Sort of thing that if you don't have the right tool, it's almost impossible to do. So first of all, I'm gonna take the cap off. I'll just use a screwdriver for that. There we go, it came off nice and easily. And then what you do, first of all, you undo this. There we go. So that's part one of the operation. That bit you can probably do with a standard socket set. The next bit you certainly can't. So I'm gonna take this out. And then this is where it gets exciting, so. What's going to happen, I'm going to screw this bit into the actual um, hole here and then we turn this bit and it, that brings this out and that pushes the arm actually off the bike. And this is where I'm now going to be pushing against the actual bike to pull the arm off. Quite a lot of force required. It's not unusual that these are really, really tight. And in fact, I had to resort to some percussive persuasion. There we go. There we go. One pedal crank. And on the other side of the bike, very, very similar operation. Because I had to remove that derailleur, I thought it was probably worth disconnecting the chain. And fortunately, this particular chain had a quick release link on it. Another specialist tool here, I'll put a link in the description. This is to remove the bottom bracket. And this is a reverse thread, so I am putting it in what feels like the wrong direction. Again, a bit of percussive persuasion required. And won't be needing that anymore. I also noticed that the way the kit is fixed, I'm gonna to need to remove this kickstand. So I'm removing the cover plate off the motor, ready to be fitted and also making sure that I retain the bolts and importantly, the washers that go underneath. It was all going so well, I was just about to put the motor on and then we hit a snag. I tried to slide the motor on and I've actually hit a bit of a problem, which is we've got this plastic 
gear cable guide underneath and it's just its profile is just a bit too high to actually slide the motor on so I need to somehow either remove it or at least reduce its profile. Uh, now I did actually ask a question to the community and uh, a couple of um, suggestions came back. The main one and the one I probably will go with is to actually just replace this um, sheathed gear cable with gear cable housing all the way from the selector all the way to the derailleur. But another suggestion was actually just to cut a small bit of gear housing, actually attach it to the bottom of the bottom bracket here, run the cable through that and it might be slightly lower profile. And the third option is just to see if I can actually reduce the profile of the existing guide just by using a Como drill on it. So I've got my Como drill out and failed miserably. It wasn't just the plastic, it's also the bolt that was holding it on. It just didn't feel like the right way to go about it. So in the end I decided for plan A, using the cable housing, which I've got an order, so I just made sure the cable wasn't in the way and sure enough, it now slid on nicely. So I put the securing plate back on again, complete with the two washers underneath and the two bolts. So where I removed the stand, it was now time to bolt what they call the fixed block in place. Then there was some serious tightening to be done. Uh, this needed to be tightened to 40 newton meters. And then I used a special tool they've supplied to tighten the BB axle again to 40 newton meters. Okay, next stage was to put the new pedal arms on uh, and tighten them to again, you guessed it, 40 newton meters. These pedal cranks look identical, however, they're not. The thread where the pedal goes is actually reversed on one side. Uh, so what I did was I went back and checked that I had the right direction for each side. And the final part of the instructions talks about adding the speed sensor and says that the distance the magnet should be from the sensor is 10 to 15 millimeters. This meant I put it on the other side of the bike away from the gears and used the provided cable ties to secure it. Just pop my ruler in there to check. Just connecting up the waterproof connector. And I've had to just lose a little bit of length there by putting a loop in. Just neating things up temporarily with these cutters. I suspect I'll be redoing this when I've got the other cables and the new shifter cable in place. Time to replace the pedals. Again, remember that reverse thread on the other side. and reconnecting the chain. So there we go, it's finished. Well, obviously clearly it's not finished, but according to this, <laughs> we've finished. Um, there are some things still to do. Um, first impression so far though is, uh, I really like the look of it. I think it looks really nice. I like the low profile nature of it. Um, nice bit of space underneath. Uh, and this is kind of cool. Doesn't make any, any noise when you uh, when you go backwards on the pedals. Um, so yeah, things still to do are gonna sort this gear cable out, brakes, gear shifters, screen, fixing the battery, all of that I'm gonna do in the next episode. So if you are enjoying this content, please do give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and if you wanna be notified when the next episode is available, hit that notification bell. Um, one thing I did wanna say is that I don't purport to be an expert in this at all. I'm an enthusiastic amateur, and I'm sure there are people out there watching who know much more than I do. If you've got any point, pointers, tips, anything I've been doing wrong, 
feel free to put them in the comments and uh, I'll try and incorporate them into the next episode. Likewise, if anyone's got any questions, again, drop those in the comments. Uh, I'll try and I'll do my best to respond and I'll also see if I can uh, address those in the next episode. So that's it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Cool. 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 Cool.